Millions of kids across the country are going back to school right now. Many of them will go to their school's library looking for new worlds in which to get lost, new characters to get to know, new stories to show them a different part of the world. But some students in Texas came back to school to find the libraries closed. A district in Fort Worth closed school libraries to students for the first two weeks of classes. It was so school officials could review titles for sexually explicit or violent content in accordance with a new Texas state law that was supposed to go into effect today, but has been temporarily put on hold by a judge. The district reopened the libraries to students this week, but more than 100 books have been pulled off the shelves for review. Returning to the Velshi Band Book Club today, uh, the author Ashley Hope Perez. Her book, Out of Darkness, is one of the more than 100 books removed from the Fort Worth Independent School District Library. Ashley, it is good to see you again. Welcome back. Thank you for being with us. Oh, always a pleasure. Why was your book removed? Well, my book is among, as you named, over 100. And if you ask why in this particular instance, it's because they've removed it other places. And I think that's one of the most important things for folks to understand about where we are in book banning in 2023 is that School leaders and um, folks in these communities are not even evaluating the books for themselves based yes. on their actual concerns. They're just copying lists from other places. If you want to rewind to 2021 and why why was my book banned, then I can answer that too. Tell us, tell but us, right because now, I think for people, there are a lot of parents who, not involved in the story, would say, okay, well, if you're taking books out that are violent or sexually explicit, that, that's, that's, that's appropriate. Tell me why yours fell into this category. Yes, thank you for asking it. The thing is, it's about what violence and yes. what sexual content and which characters. Um, because I always um, draw folks' attention to this fact. I'm a I'm a literature professor. Literature engages with human experiences, and the reality is, the Bible, Faulkner, Hemingway, many uh, Shakespeare. You could we can just keep going. These works all include violence and sexual content because those are human experiences. Uh, my book is literature as well, and it does engage with harsh realities. What's interesting and telling about these attacks is how much they focus on the experiences of Black, queer, non-white, non-dominant identities. Um, the white, middle-class, straight characters, they just don't seem to bother these folks, no matter how much sex those characters are having or how violent their actions. You said something in an article, <clears throat> an essay for NPR, in which you say to engage honestly with the realities of the time and of my characters' lives, I had to grapple with systemic racism, personal prejudice, sexual abuse, and domestic violence. So these are uncomfortable topics. There's, an, there's a thing out there, um, this anti-CRT, which isn't really anti-CRT at all, but these whole ideas of don't let kids read something that will make them uncomfortable. Some of the best literature in the world, some of the authors like you who I've had on the book club, um, talk about the fact that if you don't experience discomfort through books, when how will you learn about the experiences of others? Mm -hmm. Yeah, who gets to have the privilege of comfort? Right. And I think that uh, one of the things that I want folks to be considering is what does it mean to put hypothetical discomfort of some children over the real suffering and experiences of other children, right? To say, well, your potential discomfort, your, your child's potential discomfort is more important than uh, naming and responding to the realities of Americans whose stories haven't been told. And I think that what we know about removing books that portray difficult experiences for young people is that that does real harm to real kids who need places to recognize harm. For, for example, sexual abuse. If you see it in a book and you have opportunities to discuss it with a trusted adult, uh, you're far more likely to be able to name it when you encounter it yourself or have a friend or loved one who's experiencing it. As a sexual abuse survivor, I really wish I had had the opportunity to recognize in literature the experience that I endured. And, and that's something a number of authors tell me, because some of the things, even in their fictional writing, is, is uh, autobiographical to some point, and they said exactly what you said. And then people email them, kids email them and say, I saw myself in your book. 
We've had authors tell me that there were kids who were thinking about taking their own lives who then finally saw in a book their experience and said, I, I, I feel seen. Somebody saw me. I, I, I'm not a weird outlier. Um, and, and, you, and you make some kid's life. Yeah, well, let's talk about the fact that, sh that, sure, there are books like mine that take kids to difficult topics that are historical, that are real, that have shaped the communities that they're living in. But you know what? These are also stories of transformation and healing. That it were, It's not just about wallowing in pain. It's about envisioning different possibilities. And what I hear from kids who read Out of Darkness is that this is a book that made them hungry for justice and wanting to create a better world with room for more folks. Great to talk to you again. Thank you for making a return appearance for us. Ashley Hope Perez is the author of Out of Darkness. It's my latest episode of Velshi Band Book Club. I sit down, by the way, with Margaret Atwood, the author of the best-selling novel, The Handmaid's Tale. You can scan the QR code on your screen to listen wherever you get your podcasts. All right.